Hey, how's it going everyone? In this video, we will take a look at how we can optimize our tests that we wrote so far to make them more dynamic and we will do that by getting rid of some of the existing data dependencies we have. So let's get started. Hey there, welcome to our mission bro. If this is your first time on the channel, thank you for clicking on this video. I create new content related to testing and automation every week. And if this is something you're interested in, please make sure to subscribe to my channel and hit the bell icon to get notified of my newly uploaded content. Now let's jump right into the code section and take a look at the problem we have with our existing code. So this is what we have wrote so far. We have a get test over here and we have another couple more get test. We are then doing a post test, put test and a delete test. So if you remember from the previous video, what I'm going to do is just run the test here just to show it to you guys. If I hit enter. All right, so we ran a test. All six of them passed if you see over here. So if I run the same test again, all right, so it's running again, it's trying to hit all of our routes and then our delete test failed. So it's saying resource not found. And well, what's happening is if you notice that we are using this existing ID over here, which is 21 and we already deleted this ID, right? So if I'm trying to run this ID again, it's actually saying that it doesn't exist. And we discussed that in the previous video. So what we're going to do, and if you notice, if we, let's say, come back to this put test and if someone ends up deleting this one, three, two, so when we're running this test, even this would fail and we'll throw the same error, same thing with any other IDs, right? Because we are depending on this particular ID over here. We want to make our test as dynamic as possible so that we can run it one time, 10 times, hundred times. It should always pass. So we need to get rid of this flakiness that's happening over here. Well, in this case, it's not even flakiness. We know for sure it's going to fail because that ID doesn't exist. So let's take a look at how we can actually fix this. So here's what we're going to do. We're just going to take advantage of the existing test we have wrote, but just change a few things here and there to make sure that our, every time we run our test, it always pass. So let's see how we can do that. So the first thing I'm going to do is we're going to follow the crude operation over here. We're going to create a data, then we're going to read that particular data, and then we would update it and then delete it. So in this way, we are always working with that particular ID that we created, which we know will always be there. So now let's take a look at how we can actually approach this. So what I'm going to do is create a copy of this file. So here's what we're going to do. We have our described test. I'm going to remove this. We don't need this anymore. All right. Now, instead of doing a get directly over here, I'm going to do a post first. So I'm going to move this test. I'm going to copy this and move this at the very top paste it here. Now I will create a describe block for this just to um, group this particular test. I would just say this post and then add this post test here. All right. So I don't need to say this post anymore. We can just say users. So this is good. We have our this users. We have this post. Now what we are doing, if you remember from this particular test is we are creating a new user. So the, what we can do out of this is when we create a user, we get a user ID. We can take advantage of that user ID and then pass it to all our other tests. So this way we know that user will always exist because we just created it through our test. So let's take a look at how we can do it. So here, if you notice, we were creating the data and we were getting this body uh, rest.body.data in return. So what I'm going to do is create a new variable um, somewhere at the top where we can access it. So let's say I can create it here. I can call it let user ID and then assign it to um, well, we don't even have to assign it anything. I can just leave it this way. Or we can assign it to null, whichever works with you. All right. So in this scenario, what I'm going to do is once we have verified that the data is there, I'm just going to do user ID equals rest dot body dot. Um, I think it was what data dot ID. Right. So that's what we actually verifying over here. Now, if we try to run this, um, what will happen is this test will run. We will have this user ID captured. And then we will print out that user ID. So let's just do that just to make sure that our user ID is being captured properly. And what I'm going to do is only run this specific test. I don't want to run everything else. I will do NKIM test. All right, so our test ran. And there you go. We have our new ID. If I run this, it will give me another new ID, which is cre which creating every time we're running the test. Okay, this time we have 1370. Perfect. So this is good. We have our user ID. It's working. Now for the rest of our test, we're going to keep passing that user ID. So here, if you notice, we created this describe block, which is ending over here. I'm going to create another describe block and call that a get. 
and we will bring all of our get test built over there. This is just would be easier for us to know uh, which ones we are going to be running and we can run specific get test or port te post test depending on the grouping. Um, so I don't need this get over here. I will just remove that. Same thing over here and then remove it here also. Awesome. So this is good. And then anywhere we are using an ID. So in this scenario, we are doing um, directly on users, which is fine. But over here, we are using one, right? So I'm just going to update this with the user ID, which we just created. So I'm going to do user ID. So that's good. And I believe we are, nope, we are not using it over here. So we have our two tests where we're actually using this. So I'm going to run both the tests to make sure they are working. I hit npm test. And I think something is wrong with our file. We can see it right over here. Let's see what's going on. Pull up. Um, oh, okay. I made a mistake over here. This should just be user ID, not dollar, because it's not part of a string. All right, let's run this. So our post test field, and it failed because it timed out. Oh, so it probably took more than two seconds for it to create the test. And you would see this happening from time to time. Sometimes some particular request will take more than X amount of seconds. So if I run it again, it would pass. Um, another option, what you can do is actually change the timeout of your mocha test. So basically what you can do is, and I think this is a good trick I can show it to you guys. So we are running a test in our um, packages. And right, if you notice, we created a, um, if I come back here, we are running it through this. And by default, it has a 2000 millisecond uh, timeout. So we can fix that by just saying, hey, just change the timeout to five sec, 5,000 sec, uh, millisecond. And this would basically be five seconds. And you would do this because if you know, because we are working with a third party API here and that it sometimes takes time. If too many people are hitting that API, there would be effect on the performance. So we can come back and change this. Now, if I run this test, it should work. And it's good. We actually found that error so that uh, we can actually put that over here. Yep, there you go. It's working. It only took one second this time, which is fine. And all of our tests passed. Perfect. Even this one is working with the user ID. So that's great. So our actual logic of passing the user ID is working. So I'm going to remove dot only here. We'll also remove this here. And if I scroll down, we will pass this over here too. So instead of just updating this particular thing, I'm going to be using template string here. And I will pass my user ID. So that's good. I can remove this console log here. So this one already looks good. So just the way we were grouping everything, I'm going to group this one also. Call it a put test. Copy the entire thing. Paste it over here. And this is mainly for the reason, let's say if you want to add more put tests, you can just group it over here. You can also create separate file, but in this scenario, we are working with the user route. So it just makes sense to just group it this way and easily run whichever one you want. And I would remove this. All right, so that's good. Um, same thing for describe. I'm going to just create a quickly a describe block. And then put this over there. Okay, and then remove this. All right, so this was the one that was failing because obviously we deleted that particular ID, but obviously you know at this point that that won't happen because we just created a new ID and we know that will always be there. So I can replace this with user ID and I can, I don't need to print anything out here. All right, so this is good. If I just run this right now, let's see what happens. Okay, there you go. Our test ran and it failed. And I think this one ran because we also ran this particular file over here. And as you can notice, that one failed because we didn't have that ID there. So obviously, I'm just going to skip this over here. And we can do it just by putting an X over there, which would skip it. Or you can do describe.skip. And what I'm going to do is run this test again, which is the first one. So it's going to run this and see if it works. All right, so if you notice, this one got skipped. So we have six pending tests and six tests that are passing. And I can keep running it as many times as possible. And this test will always pass. And the reason being is the way we have organized our test is in a way that every time we run particular tests, it's dependent on the previous one, which let me show it to you guys. Hold on. So what's happening is we are creating a user, right? And we have that ID, which you're passing it to other tests. We are passing it to the, our get user ID. We're passing it when we're updating the ID. And then when we are deleting it, 
So even if it deletes this, doesn't matter. The next time we're running, we're working with a new user. And that's the advantage we get. So basically for this one particular file, we went through all routes. We are creating a user. We are deleting a user. We are getting that, updating it. And you can kind of create as many tests as possible. And anytime you have this kind of delete test over there, you don't have to worry about it because we're creating a brand new one every scenario. Now, one thing I do want to mention over here is, so let's see if there's an issue with our post test. For example, we couldn't get this user ID created. And as you know, that if because of this, everything else is dependent, right? So all of this test are technically dependent on this post test. So if this doesn't work, all of the remaining tests will fail. Now, I know that is a downside that we have when we are creating this dependent test. So kind of doing that integration between this multiple test. Well, in my opinion, it's probably better to do it this way rather than do it where we are depending on an existing data that's residing in your test environment or some dev environment. Because anyone can go in there and delete that. At least in this scenario, we know, okay, if post fail, sure, the other tests fail and they're probably failing because of this reason. Now, maybe let's say if this one timed out, what you can do is have a retry for this particular test, or even you can do a retry overall in Mocha where it would try to run that test and if it fails. So even if let's say a post test fail, we know the other test would fail too. But at least we understand that there's a dependency here. Compared to a test would fail, we don't even know what happened because someone went in there and deleted our particular test ID in the test environment or the dev environment, right? That thing you cannot control, but at least here you can control your test would fail. You can come in here, fix this test, run all the other tests and see if it's working. So I think this is way more control and this is probably a better approach to do compared to the one we were doing. Now I know there are many other ways to optimize this also, but I think for now, this is pretty good. So I hope you got the idea what we did here. If you notice previous file, we were just creating a test and we were depending on the previous ID that's already been there versus creating our own ID over here. Now I know I've said this probably 10 times now, so I'm gonna stop and uh, end this video over here. If you like this video, please make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. In the next video, we'll take a look at how we can take advantage of async awaits instead of using test this way. All right, that's it for this video, guys. I will see you in the next one.